question for Andy, please. Just uh, your reaction to Friday night and the emotional scenes we saw with Roger's retirement, and can you give us any insight what it was like behind the scenes, please? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it was obviously a well, special night. Um, yeah, it was very emotional, uh, you know, like especially seeing Roger's family there and his children and everything. Like, yeah, for me, that was, I mean, it was really nice, but very, very emotional as well. Um, and yeah, you could see like, yeah, what it meant to, you know, to Roger and, and Rafa. You know, I, I heard some of the words that Rafa said afterwards and, um, yeah, I found the, the, the few days in the build up to th that day as well. Like, I just I found myself thinking a lot about, um, you know, these last sort of 10, 15 years more um, than I probably have done before when I was going through some of the injury problems. I didn't know if I was going to play. I was thinking about it a lot from my own perspective, but maybe looking at it more in a broader uh, perspective, like thinking about what Roger's done for the game and what, you know, Rafa and Novak as well and what this period has been like. Um, you know, it's, it has been special. Um, and yeah, we're lucky to be here and be present for, for Friday night. Uh, Simon Briggs, uh, Daily Telegraph. Uh, I mean, I think you were asked on Thursday about whether it made you think about your own um, final act whenever that is. I just wondered if watching that on Friday, does that make you think differently or change or, or bring it even further to the forefront of your mind? Like, I guess everybody in their mid-30s is thinking, how, how do they want to finish? Look, I'm really not thinking about that right now. Um, <laughs> I certainly won't and don't deserve to have a, a send-off like that. I mean, you know, Roger did deserve that night and it was super special having all of those guys there you know watching on the side of the court and having you know having them there made it made it really special I mean like for me I'm I'm not gonna have a, a farewell like match I guess like that I mean I probably would announce when I'm gonna play my last event and stuff but um, when that is uh, I don't know, like, I'm still playing competitive tennis and physically feeling good against top players. I just need to start really turning some of these, you know, tight losses and close matches in, into wins. Um, so sim simple, simple as that. Uh, hi, uh, Andy uh, and Matteo. This is a question for both of you. Um, Stephen Higgins from RT Radio in Ireland. I would have asked this if you won, just to promise. Um, what are the biggest challenges you both find when you transfer from singles into doubles at this level? Um, uh, I, I don't know. So, so sometimes a little bit like being up, up at the net, um, like when you're playing against guys and a lot of the especially against two singles players that hit the ball as big as them, like just making sure your reflex and stuff are sharp enough. Sharp enough. You know, we, we very rarely play those sorts of shots and singles, whereas, you know, the serve and return, you know, you can kind of do from anywhere and you hit a lot of first volleys and singles when you come to the net, but not many where you're standing close to the net and you've got, you know, Jack Sop winding up to hit a forehand. You know, it's, it, it's difficult. You don't you don't get that, and often the ball is coming right at you when you're at the net. Um, whereas in singles, guys tend to be trying to hit away from you and trying to pass you, so you're hitting more volleys on the stretch. Whereas often in doubles, the ball's coming right at you. So for me, it would probably be be that. Um, yeah, probably the same thing, and I think also the approach on the return. I think it's a little bit different on my side. Um, especially in the first serve, you know, like in doubles, I feel like you have to be a little bit more aggressive because you have the guy at the net that is moving. So, you know, sometimes in single, it's okay to just put the ball in the court and in doubles, it's not, sometimes it's not enough. And I feel it's really important the percentage of serve. Um, yeah. 
and yeah, like you said, volleys and this kind of like reaction time, you know, it's 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 really important. Um, yeah, tough tough loss today. Hi, uh, Clara Cherry for Sudwest. Questions for both of you. How did you prepare for this double? It's your first Labour Cup, Andy. So, did you did Matteo gave you? advice because he did doubles yesterday or how did you manage to to prepare for that and Andy how is your knee? <laughs> yeah my, my knee's fine and um, yeah we I mean obviously Matteo played a great doubles yesterday against Jack so yeah we I mean we spoke a little bit about that um, uh, I, I felt fine I felt better today going into the match than I did on Friday I felt quite nervous and anxious going into that match whereas today um, yeah, I, I felt good, and um, I thought, I mean, I feel like I've said this a lot recently, but I felt like we played a good match. I thought we were, you know, a, a solid team and did enough to, to win the match. And, you know, we were in the locker room afterwards talking about, you know, should have done this on this point, could have done this on this point. But, yeah, I mean, we... We, we we played we played a good match. We just didn't manage to to get over the line, and it's a shame because I enjoyed playing a lot with Matteo. Um, he played very well, and just a shame shame we couldn't win. Yeah, uh, I actually felt the same. Really good doubles. Um, yeah, a few points you know when against us we were a little bit unlucky to say, or uh, yeah, we double folded them. Super tie break, which we never did before. Um, doubles is like this, you know. Like sometimes, even though you're feeling the momentum and you're playing maybe better than them, like it can, everything can change in in a second. And yeah, it was a it, it was a tough one. I think I played better than actually than yesterday, even better than yesterday. Uh, but again, doubles is like this. It's tough to digest. I think tougher than for us. I mean, for me, you know, I'm playing singles mostly. Tougher to digest than than singles. Andy, Russell Fuller from the BBC, a question about the format of the Labour Cup. Now you've had a chance to play in it. It, it seems to me that it's a very popular event. Look at the ticket sales in cities around the world. But I sense also that actually most people probably don't particularly care who wins ultimately. So is there anything you would suggest that could be changed to try and make sure it becomes a major event for years to come? Um, sorry, I got a bit distracted in the middle of the, the question. But... Um, the players care a lot about who wins. Like, I was really disappointed the other night. Um, and yeah, like, we're in the locker room after the matches, you know, which finished late yesterday, and we're all discussing about, like, who should play in the matchups and, um, you know, who should play the, the doubles and which lineup we should, we should go with tomorrow. Well, not now today. Um, and from a player's perspective, like, yeah, this 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 event is special and it is unique, and you can't you cannot be on the tennis court with all of these guys, top players that you know we all have huge you know respect for, and the the captains on the side of the court, Rod Laver in the stands, and not care like about the the results. So, you know. I believe this this competition has a lot of potential for you know for for the future and um, you know I'm sure Roger is going to stay involved in in the event in some capacity and maybe one day you know captain the the, the you know the the team um, and things like that and for all tennis players that is is special to to be a part of and I I, I like the I like the the format as well you know it keeps all of the matches interesting going into the last day you know both teams have an opportunity to win um, and yeah I think it, it works well yeah Neil McLennan for the mirror T to both of you please a, a final Roger question as well if I may about how, how what kind of a coach do you think Roger will make would make if he decides to go and be a coach in the future, and how important is it for a legend like that to, to remain involved in the game in some capacity? Uh, I think he would, he would be a great coach. Uh, he sees tennis as, uh, like, not a lot of people see tennis like that. Um, 
not just because the way he was playing, but just because, you know, like the love that he has for the game and how he watches matches. Uh, he always has the right thing to, things to say. Um, so I think he he would be like a great coach. Uh, I don't know if he wants to do that. <laughs> and uh, I think, and also if you, you know, he's going to feel like it. I don't think he's going to coach anybody, uh, like just everybody. He's, he's going to pick wisely. Uh, but I mean, I think for tennis, obviously, it would be really important, would be special. But I feel like he should do what he likes to do. So I th he said that he's gonna be in tennis, but I don't know how. Um, obviously, I, I think like Andy, he's gonna be involved in the Labor Cup. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully, he's gonna be on tour. Uh, I would like to see him more often. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, like Matteo said, I'm sure if he was to coach one day, which I, he certainly, I mean, he obviously doesn't need to. Uh, he, you know, he pick, you know, players that I'd imagine he'd be motivated to be coaching in the the, the big matches and helping there. Um, obviously, with his experience, um, <laughs> the one thing that is I think difficult when you are as talented and have as many options as him is to remember that not everybody can you know can do the things that he did and sometimes like I don't know like you s he might see a shot and be like oh you know maybe you know he should have played that one but it's you know he just ha he had the ability to play everything and he had so many options at his disposal um that you know that that's the, I think the challenging thing also as, as a coach sometimes, um, especially someone in, in his position. But yeah, look, he's, he's great on the side. He watches a lot of tennis. He loves the game. Um, and I think for ex-players that go into coaching, I think that that's really important to sort of stay current and, you know, know a lot of the players and, you know, study the, the matches and stuff uh, to understand the player's strengths and weaknesses. So, um, but... Yeah, I, I don't know if that's something that he, he will go into, but I, I hope he remains, you know, part of tennis. He said he would, and like I said, I'm sure he'll be here. You know, maybe he does a little bit of TV here and there. I know how much he loves Wimbledon. Um, so, yeah, great for tennis if he can stay around um, a little bit. Ciao Matteo, Ciao. Serena Bergomi, RSI. Um, partendo dal presupposto che il tennis è uno sport individuale, qui siamo in un contesto un po' diverso, quanto può arricchirti un'esperienza del genere? No, eh, tantissimo. Um, lo ha fatto già la Davis, è stata una settimana, dieci giorni molto intensi, molto importanti per me. E qui forse c'è qualcosa in più perché si, si, si apprende, si, si prende da delle leggende del mio sport, del nostro sport e eh, dello sport in generale, quindi questa è sicuramente una settimana che rimarrà nella, nella mia memoria per tanto tempo, per sempre, e per tutto quello che è successo per Roger, per il fatto di essere stato coachato da lui, da Novak, e allen essermi allenato con Rafa e con tutti gli altri, insomma è un'esperienza che non capita, non, forse non capiterà mai più, quindi è qualcosa che, che mi porto dentro, non solo per la, la stagione, ma per per la mia carriera e la mia vita in generale. Ciao Matteo. Ciao. Federica Cocchi, Gazzetta dello Sport. Ehm, a proposito di questa idea di doppio con Ole, mm -hmm. è una, una cosa perseguibile qualche volta in qualche torneo, chiaramente, oddio, per quanto possiate fare dei tornei più piccoli? Vediamo, nel senso che a me piace giocare il doppio, mi diverto. E, anche oggi è stata una bellissima, una bellissima esperienza, secondo me a un livello molto alto di doppio, eh, però la mia priorità è il singolo e, e purtroppo sappiamo tutti che il mio corpo <ride> eh, fa un po' di fatica a tenere questi ritmi, nel senso che già in singolo lo sforzo molto, quindi giocare singolo e doppio, soprattutto quando inizio a giocare tanto eh, è complicato, però 
ci dovesse essere l'occasione, insomma, giocare con Novak, con Andy, con questi giocatori qui, sarebbe un grandissimo onore. E sì, forse in qualche torneo magari più piccolo, non lo so, però non, non ne abbiamo parlato. Adesso siamo concentrati su, su Lever Cup. Ciao Matteo, da Repuppo, tennis italiano, Eurosport Italia. A proposito della domanda di Serena, volevo chiederti nel dettaglio se, visto che voi siete tanto appassionati del gioco e andate nel dettaglio tecnico, c'è qualcosa davvero che magari cambierai anche nel tuo approccio proprio nel tennis in una, un aspetto particolare visto quello che ti hanno consigliato eh, se lo puoi dire insomma mm, è difficile diciamo andare sul tecnico in così pochi giorni con alla fine un singolo e due doppi quindi è, è complicato però ho sicuramente imparato, imparato tanto osservando guardando gli altri e cercando di capire quali sono le cose che magari potrei variare un po' di più non credo dal punto di vista tecnico ma magari dal punto di vista tattico per esempio quello che mi ha detto Novak eh, in risposta per esempio in, nel match con Felix mi è servito essere un pochino più lontano dalla linea in questa occasione eh, però insomma è difficile dirti adesso cosa. secondo me ho giocato tre buoni match sto giocando bene, mi sento bene e i ragazzi mi hanno aiutato parecchio un po' alla fine la cosa principale è sentire il supporto, sentire l'aiuto degli altri, no? e quindi questa è la cosa più, più importante, però eh, quello che diceva Roger durante il match di ieri, insomma è vero, ogni tanto deve andare un po' più lungo linea con il rovescio per, per non farmi inchiodare troppo su quella diagonale, però insomma eh, non sono segreti incredibili quando arriviamo a questi livelli, sono cose, insomma, di si parla di dettagli. Grazie a tutti.